Hello there, programmers. Welcome to another episode. Um, today we're going to cover Fast API, and I am your instructor, Chris Franklin. So, what is Fast API? It is a framework built off of the ASGI, which is the Asynchronous Server Gateway Interface. It's a little bit different than other web frameworks in Python that are built off of the WSGI, which is the Web Server uh, Gateway Interface. Um, which is the synchronous uh, framework uh, built on Python. So as of Python 3.6, there are some built-in asynchronous functions. Um, specifically, async await is what we're going to be using today. Um, and this allows us to build more performant, scalable web services, um, and it'll be quick to stand them up. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. Let's not beat around the bush here. So we're going to set up our environment. Um, I have a virtual environment set up with a fast API um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to install it so we just want to do pip install fast API we'll hit enter and then we'll watch this run through the installation um, this will install three things fast API pydantic and starlet so fast API is built on top of pydantic and starlet um, one for our um, uh, type checking and one for um, our actual web interface itself uh, and then um, we're going to also install uh, Uvicorn, which is a web server. Um, and this is actually going to be the thing that serves up all of our endpoints and acts as the framework running everything. Um, now, it suggests using Uvicorn because this is a much faster way of running applications than uh, building in its own uh, HTTP server. So um, that's what we're going to use this for. Okay. Uh, once we actually get those up and running inside of our environment, we'll go ahead and uh, spin up a new Python file. Uh, we can just call this main.py. You can call this whatever you want, but main.py. Um, it's important to know what you name it, though, because as you see when we start Uvicorn, you have to reference the file name, and then inside of that, you have to reference the name of the app that you stand up. So let's do from fast API uh, import fast API, okay? And then we're going to set up our app. And we can call this anything we want again. But it, what's important is that you know the name one of the file and two of this object that you're standing up in here. OK. Now, if you've used other web frameworks in, in Python, you know, um, you've seen the decorator syntax and how to use that to set up routes. Um, we're going to go ahead and do that here. We're going to set up a main route. OK, so we app dot at app or at app dot and then we're going to set up a get uh, we're not going to cover what all the different methods are you can use here know that you can do things like get post delete update um, all of those all of those different endpoints are, are can be used for crud applications um, which is one of the applications we can use for this for for building microservices um, but we're going to use the new keyword here asynchronous and then we're going to define root so um, async is that keyword that I was just talking about. This is new in 3.6. And uh, so make sure you have newer than Python 3.6 to make this work. Once you have that in there, you can return uh, whatever it is you want to return. We're going to return a, uh, an, uh, a, a dictionary here. And we're going to put hello world. OK. Uh, and then, oops. Hit enter, and here we go. Now we have a full fast API application. Um, now, to see this run, we're going to come down here, and instead of the traditional way uh, inside of most web frameworks where we set up a main block and we can hit play from in here, add a configuration, what we're going to do is we're instead going to run off of the terminal here. So, what we do is we use Uvicorn, which we installed. And then this is where the names of those two objects that I just pointed out is really important. Main is the name of the file. And then app is the name of the object inside of the file. And then we can pass in a, a flag here um, to reload so that we, as we write new code, it the web server will automatically reload. It'll watch this file for us. So when we hit start, we can see we're running at 127.0.0.1 port 8000. OK, everything's up and running. We're good to go here. So let's go ahead and uh, test this. So let's say curl and we'll do localhost and we'll do port 8000. 
um, and we'll hit enter and we'll see what comes back. Look at that. We got back our JSON blob message. Hello world. Okay. Super simple, super straightforward. Let's look at a couple of um, slightly more complicated examples here just to give you uh, an idea of what's coming up uh, in this tutorial series. Uh, I'll go ahead and create another endpoint app.get and we'll call this one. Um, let's do something like items and then what we'll do here is we'll use the curly braces to define that we want to pass in a variable here. Okay. And then we can say async def, and we're going to call this function read item, and we're going to give it an item ID. Now, one of the other things that this framework is going to give us, and you'll get to see this in uh, the coming up tutorials, is we can type check these uh, th these path variables in here and make sure that they are the right path. And if they're not, we'll throw an error automatically, just part of the framework. So we can say item ID and we can say item ID. Okay, so there we go. Let's save this and let's hit that endpoint. So if I do get on item slash one, I hit enter. Uh, yep, and that's expected. You get a 404 not found if you use item instead of items. Hit enter and now we get item ID of one. Now what happens if I hit this and I type in um, a string? Oh, there we go. So now we're going to get an error back. Detail, location, path, item ID. The message value is not a valid integer. And uh, what we're expecting is a type error. So uh, an integer type error. So this is what I'm talking about. There's a lot of built-in features of this that are going to make it super powerful and make it uh, validate the input that's being passed in. You can see down here in our terminal where we're running this, the 404 not found, the 200 OK when it worked, and then the 422 unprocessus, unprocessable entity. OK, uh, there's only one more thing I want to walk through just to kind of show you the power of this. Um, so let's go ahead and I got to bring a window into view here. Let's bring in here and we'll go localhost 8000. OK. But let's go to docs slash docs. So fast API has built into it. It has a swagger schema and it automatically takes your endpoints and um, will turn them into swagger. But if you don't like swagger, it also comes with out of the box without any additional configuration redoc. Okay. Um, so you can come into Redoc. You can see this is this looks like a lot of websites that you see uh, now on the internet. You can see uh, this is the get endpoint, and this is items with item ID endpoint. You can see the sample responses. It's 422 or 200. This is exactly what we saw in our terminal over here. These are the things that we expect to see, and um, so this is Redoc. Um, we can also use if you have Open API. Um, you can use openapi.json and you hit enter here and you can see the open API docs uh, for all of your endpoints. So that's it. That's all I really wanted to go over. Um, uh, getting you your hands dirty with fast API, just getting you used to using it, uh, seeing what it looks like and seeing that it comes with built in documentation. So this is really built for churning out microservices as fast as possible. If you want an, an API facing out into the world that someone can use to access data and not a web application, this is the, the framework for you. This will allow you to build them faster, more efficient, though, and they will actually perform better than any of the other uh, frameworks in the Python world. Um, so uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial in the series. We'll dive deep into uh, some of those path parameters and what we can do with them. I'll see you next time.